Well, thank you, Susan. Uh, thank you for your comments, and again, thank you for your <coughs> tremendous support and encouragement in the development of the Koch Institute. I'm going to spend just a few minutes introducing uh, the symposium and, and, and actually echo some of Susan's comments regarding the development of the new Koch Institute. Um, I've sort of updated this audience each year as we've begun thinking about the future of cancer research and ultimately the planning of this new entity. Uh, but we've had an important change over the last year in the formalization of that process, and I'll tell you a few of those details. With respect to the symposium, uh, as you've heard, this is uh, taking cancer research really to a new dimension. Uh, we firmly believe here at MIT that uh, applying the tools and technologies of, of nanotechnology to cancer is extremely important to develop new materials and new devices to understand cancer, treat it more effectively, diagnose it more effectively and more rapidly, and, and, and monitor the disease as well uh, to ultimately prevail uh, in this important fight. Uh, this is an extremely uh, exciting developing area in cancer research, and it's wonderful for us to be able to highlight it here in this symposium. I'd like to thank uh, Ralph Weislater and Bob Langer for their efforts in organizing uh, the scientific program, and also to Pam DeFreya, who did much of the administrative work uh, organizing today's events. Just a few statistics. Um, uh, we have more than 1,100 individuals registered uh, for today's symposium, who will filter in and out, I'm sure, over the course of the day, um, representing um, folks from MIT, but more broadly from many other academic communities uh, in and around Boston uh, and New England. Um, in addition to academic uh, investigators, we have 87, represent 87 companies represented uh, in today's audience, um, 47 universities and research institutions. Uh, and very important to me, we're broadening this message and the importance of this symposium beyond our region. Um, individuals from 15 states and indeed six countries are participating in today's symposium. Um, you've seen the agenda, you have the agenda. It is indeed very impressive, featuring some speakers from our own program in nanotechnology and cancer, as well as experts uh, in this field drawn from around the country. I'm sure you will agree uh, that this is a very exciting and a very important uh, group of discussions and presentations. I'd like to thank um, individuals, uh, companies that have uh, sponsored us uh, for this symposium, our affiliates, El Nylum, Genentech, Johnson & Johnson, and Merck, uh, and our sponsors, New England Biolabs, GenomeQuest, Serono, Reproductive Institute, Cell Signaling Technology, and Merrimack Pharmaceuticals. And I want to underscore Merrimack because, unfortunately, due to timing, uh, their name did not appear in our program, but we'd like to gratefully acknowledge their support as well. Uh, also, as we've done each year, um, we have a group of vendors who have set up their wares outside in the, in the corridor. Please do visit them uh, during the breaks. Um, and uh, hear what they have to say and have to sell you. I also want to touch on the transition that Susan uh, discussed. Um, as you know, for the last uh, 34 years, we have existed here at MIT as the MIT Center for Cancer Research, an NCI-designated uh, cancer center uh, with a proud and, and illustrious history. Uh, but over the last year, as I prepared you for in previous uh, symposia, we have actually undergone a transformation from the MIT Cancer Research, Center for Cancer Research, to now the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research at MIT. Uh, and this reflects two important things. Uh, one, a major donation from David Koch, who inspired and, and helped to fund this transition. Uh, and also the decision by the faculty and by the administration to reconsider the future of cancer research at MIT, and importantly, uh, to join two great strengths here on our campus in cancer science and e engineering and technology applied to cancer under one roof. Uh, and that uh, has been formalized in the Koch Institute. Uh, and here are the individuals. Um, individuals with names shown in blue are cancer biologists from the MIT School of Science. Uh, many familiar names, all faculty in the Pre previous MIT Center for Cancer Research, and those individuals whose names are shown in green are engineering faculty who have been drawn from many MIT departments to join us uh, in the new Koch Institute. And you can see uh, in the center of the slide uh, an artist rendition of the structure, which, as Susan mentioned, is now a hole in the ground at the corner of Ames Street and Main Street, but will soon be a physical structure, and I'll show you some photographs of that in a moment. This. Uh, the Koch Institute will take on cancer in many ways. 
um, using a highly collaborative, interactive strategy with a clear mission focus on applying our science and our technology to understand and ultimately prevail uh, against cancer. There will be five research programs uh, with nanotechnology appropriately front and center, um, a program in detection and monitoring, which you'll also hear a bit about today. Uh, we'll also focus on metastasis, uh, pathways and drug resistance, as well as using the immune system to uh, more effectively combat cancer. There will be other activities that our investigators are involved with, but our major programs will be these, and we think together uh, extremely powerful in the new approaches against cancer. The new building will sit in an important site on the MIT campus at the corner of Ames Street and Main Street, uh, perpendicular to the Koch Biology Building across the street from the Whitehead Institute and the, Koch in, uh, and the uh, Broad Institute. Um, this is really at the sweet spot of the new emerging uh, life science and engineering um, uh, complex on the MIT campus. And as Susan mentioned, we will have many core facilities in the new Koch Institute will, that will be accessible to life science and engineering faculty across MIT. This is a, another version, another view of the building here from sitting at Legal Seafoods. Uh, it will be an impressive facility, about 350,000 square feet, uh, housing 25 laboratories and more than 500 investigators. Importantly, as Susan mentioned, each floor will have scientists and engineers um, working together uh, and several uh, spaces within each floor for um, promoting interactions, which we think are key to our goal of promoting ultimately collaborative activities. Uh, there will also be spaces throughout the building for informal gatherings, including uh, a very beautiful, we think, uh, art and educational gallery that will run the length of Main Street on the first floor. This is one view uh, and this is another. So we're extremely excited about the development of the Koch Institute, both the intellectual and academic activities that will take place there, uh, as well as the physical structure that uh, is today a hole in the ground. But over the next year, uh, we'll grow out of that, uh, that hole and become an impressive facility. And so in closing, uh, I encourage you to visit the Koch Institute and the Koch Institute websites shown here. Uh, and when you go there, you'll see what we think is a very important statement of what we're about. We believe that the Koch Institute does represent uh, the next generation of cancer research uh, because indeed the next generation is waiting. And so with that, let me start the uh, formal uh, proceedings. Uh, again, core to what we're doing, but I think core to what the nation is doing is applying new technologies to the fight against cancer. And very small technologies, nanotechnologies, may be indeed the most powerful of those approaches. And so let's get started. Let me introduce Michael Sima, uh, who is Professor of Material Science and Engineering here at MIT and uh, a new member of the Koch Institute. Michael. Thank you.